Uh, yes, I did start it. You did? 33 seconds. Holy crap. We better get going. Yeah, we're going to get out of here. There's no library we can go to or anything like that, is there? Seems like they kicked us out at 9 last time? Yeah. Or was it 10? It was earlier than 9. I think it may even be 8. Remember how suspicious that woman was? Yeah. It's like, is this related to, war or to school? Are you having a business meeting? Well, we're going to discuss a book. Will there be wankery involved? <laughs> Why do they call it That Gets My Goat? I mean, it's just stupid. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. For some reason, we're in, like, a windstorm, which hadn't even begun when we first met this evening, but... It kicked up to, like, hurricane levels for a very short time, which sadly happened while we were outside. And now it's down to just gale force winds, but we can't manage to completely get rid of the wind noise on the mic, so hopefully this won't be unbearable to listen to. But if you and I are talking, it probably will be anyways, Ram. Yeah, it's, it's slightly unbearable. <laughs> So we did it. We we got together aside from our normal get together and record things the other day, and went to a convention. Yeah, we don't get together except for for Dune Steve related stuff anymore. Have you noticed that we never go to soccer games, we never go to a movie without saying, "Well, we'll re review it afterward." I don't go over to your house just for an orgy or. Yeah, we used to do that all the time. The the key parties were a lot of fun, but since the podcast started, those kind of dried up. Which is too bad, but uh, so yeah. On occasion, though, we do. And uh, although I guess this was still Dune Steep related, because here we are talking about it on the show. It's the only way you can write it off on your taxes. Yeah, there you go. Although I have nothing to write off because we got in free. I got free tickets to this convention, which I thought was pretty cool. I probably wouldn't have gone otherwise, uh, which just says that I'm a sad, lame. Uh, I, do, I don't have any spirit of adventure within me anymore. And it all died years ago when I was arrested for throwing lemon mayonnaise rinses at people's houses. Uh, you were beaten with a rubber hose for <laughs> your homemade mol Molotov cocktail. So anyways, we went to this convention and I don't know, what did you think of the convention? Was it... Uh, well, you've been to Comic-Con before in San Diego and so right. you know how... A convention. Kidly, this was, or right. how unattended, underattended this was, or you know how low key this was compared to the biggest one in the country. But that's kind also... of kind of a sad thing for me because that was the first convention I went to was Comic Con. I went to Comic Con, then I went to Comic Con again, and then since then, you know, it's what else can I go? Nothing's gonna really stack up to it. It's basically impossible. But they have had a couple here that I thought were really impressive. And they were, especially the last one that I went to, very well organized. And it was like Comic-Con, except for people weren't sweaty and smelly and rude. And I was just like, wow, this is really cool. This is, you know, it's like they've taken the most of the best aspects of Comic-Con and left out the, the negative ones. I mean, they didn't have, like, all the panels with celebrity, you know, the studios with the big promoting their, their <laughs> wares. That's come. the thing that, that Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, still has over all the other, is it has Hollywood's stamp of approval, or, you know, it's like, right. this is a wing of our marketing For campaign, your, you know. Right. Gonna, but uh, almost everything about the San Diego one, I mean, you've heard me complain a million times. The audience has probably heard me complain a thousand times about, you know, how difficult it is how unfun it is this was kind of the opposite of that you could go to anything you wanted you could talk to anyone you wanted it was just there were but there were so few people that i felt bad you had said that the organizer of this convention that you had seen him interviewed or he'd come onto your show to to be interviewed not the dune steep but the one that you and clay duggar do about conventions <laughs> and he had always had a dream of doing this this convention in his hometown he had a dream he had a dream and he had sunk like his whole family fortune and mortgaged like the souls of his children and stuff so that he could do this thing. But then he did it on a really bad weekend and it was 100 degrees out or 95 or something like 110. that. 110. And so few people came comparatively. Uh, he claimed, you said later, 
that he was pleased with the results. Yeah, I think but he, he was holding his wrist at the time. <laughs> he was saying that he expected to well his worst case scenario was a lot less than what came out. So it wasn't the worst case. Obviously, I don't think it was his best case scenario. But yeah, it was on the 4th of July weekend, which I don't know, that seems like a bad idea because people have plans on those there's certain things that they do in America on the 4th of July and going to a convention, you know, a, a nerd convention is not usually one of them. It doesn't go hand in hand. Although they did try, they had on the 4th of July a parade. <laughs> so they had a bunch of people dressed up and I totally we we actually ran video of this parade on our news show. We had sent somebody out there and he got pictures and I was totally going to grab a freeze frame cuz they had <laughs> <laughs> yes freeze frame i was gonna grab a freeze frame and make one of those like internet memes with it because they had a guy who <laughs> looked he looked a whole lot like i mean it was a really good version of cal drogo this guy was dressed up as cal drogo from tron yes and he was on a rickshaw bicycle riding in this parade on a rickshaw bicycle with Daenerys Targaryen, Daenerys Stormborn. <laughs> uh, she was on the back riding on this rickshaw bicycle, and I just thought, oh my gosh, that's awesome. That needs to be one of those where you get a freeze frame of it, and then you put, like, Cal Drogo on a rickshaw bicycle, and then at the bottom, your argument is invalid. I think we've just described what the episode art is for this episode. Do you have an image of this? No! See, that's the problem, is I couldn't get the, the guy... I saw it, but there was never a shot where the, the camera was on it well enough that I could get a good shot of it. And I was like, oh, dang it, I want... It was always too close, so you couldn't see that Kyle Drogo was on the rickshaw bicycle. But yeah, I just thought that was the funniest thing. You know, it's like Kyle Drogo is the horse lord, so he rides. You know, and there's the part where he is... Are you he is, thinking this? I just think it's funny. So, but, he's, but Khaleesi is what? He's, he's like, there's the part, and this is a spoiler for anybody who hasn't read Game of Thrones. This is in the first book. I'm going to spoil it for you now, so if you haven't read Game of Thrones and you mean to, fast forward like... A minute, okay? But Cal Drogo, he's he's dying, right? He's got that wound, and he's riding on his horse, and she's like, no, we need to heal you. And he's like, no, oh, must ride, must ride. And I just, <laughs> seeing him on the bicycle just gives, like, a total new meaning to those cheese, to the lines. It takes it and makes it as cheesy and goofy as, as it can be. And so it totally makes me think of those little memes where they're like, your, inner, your argument is invalid because of... Something that means nothing. It just cracked me up seeing that. But yeah, they did a parade, which that's kind of 4th of July E, although it didn't look like a lot of people were watching the parade. Um, I don't know why that would be, partly because there was another parade, I think, in town that is huge and thousands upon thousands of people go to it. A, a real parade is yes. the word you're looking for. Where they have, like, tw those giant balloons that people, like, carry, like the freaking Macy's Parade, even though we're nowhere near as large as a Macy's Parade, and they had 15 or 20 marching bands and so on and so on. So I guess I can understand why people didn't go to this parade. It would be cool, though. I mean... It seems like a, a themed parade like that would be awesome if you had like the five. What is it, the five hundred first legion? Is that what they call those guys? Five hundred first, yeah. Where you know you have all the stormtroopers like marching along and they're like playing the the empire, the imperial march and stuff. That would be rad in a parade. I think you could make a really cool fantasy themed parade. Don't I? You know I've heard at Dragon Con and I'm sure a lot of people who listen go to Dragon Con. I've heard that they do a big costume parade at Dragon Con, and it's kind of a big deal. It's a big enough deal that we run video of it on our news show. You're we are me. nowhere near uh, Atlanta, but they send out video of the Dragon Con parade, and uh, so that's interesting. It, uh, I don't know that this convention can ever get there, but you know, yeah, it's a smaller convention, but the guy seemed pleased. At the very least, I hope he got his life savings and, and, and the souls of his children back 
it earned enough to buy them out of Hawk. So <laughs> yes. he can at least, you know, go back and just pretend like nothing ever happened. They seemed like they were going to, you know, try it again next year, in, from what I could tell. I don't know if they made enough to be able to do that or how much you have to make. They had some pretty cool stuff, though, don't you think? Well, yeah, they had, like, a life-sized dragon, and I don't know what it was made of, but it didn't look half-assed or paper mache or any of that stuff, and they had hooked a smoke machine to it, and every, let's say, minute, it would blow a big plume of smoke out of that sweet-smelling, cancer-giving smoke. Right. That was really impressive. They call that atmosphere in the biz. Oh, okay. <laughs> And it clings to the inside of your nostrils like nothing else. But they had had a couple of conventions here in, in, locally before. They just barely started doing this. Well, I think 2013 was the first one they had ever had. Uh -huh. And those were so insanely well attended that I think that this guy must have thought, well, that will happen with me too. Yeah. But he had the fact that it was 4th of July weekend... You know, that it was Definitely a holiday and that them. it was super hot and that it was shortly after the last one, which was insanely well attended. And this was less publicized and all that stuff. And he just there there were a lot of things against him. Yeah, I think if he'd done it in June, you know, 10,000 more people would have shown up. But, you know, you live if in If he'd done it, I think, any other weekend than the 4th of July, probably 10,000 more people would have showed up because... Yeah, like the Friday, which should have been a bigger day, was the 4th of July. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was probably half the people that showed up on Thursday, you know, showed up on Friday. Because they're like, yeah, convention is cool and all, but uh, my whole family's getting together and having a barbecue and watching fireworks. And so I can't really go. And so, I don't know. It, it was an interesting thing. It was fun. There was like a thing where you could shoot arrows. They were like LARPing arrows. Which, I learned about the word LARP for the first time in Cory Doctorow's Big Brother book. Okay. Little Brother? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Little Brother. Big Brother is the other one. Um, Cory Orwell's book? Yes. But yeah, the, uh, this these are ones that people, like I guess, if they get together in the park and they're all like knights and they wear like armor and crap, they play with these. They're like arrows with big stuffing, like a, a wad of stuffing on the end of them. So you shoot them, and I guess you can sh shoot well, them at like, somebody. It's like a big bean bag or something on the end. Right, except for it's full of softer than beans kind of things, you know what I mean? It's full of, it's not full of beans, it's full of just like stuffing from a teddy bear or something like that. See, I think if somebody fired it directly into your taint, it wouldn't feel like just stuffing. Okay, I can understand yeah, that. Because you hit the, the target, and the target flipped all the way around, you know, and it was a solid thump kind of thing, right? I'm sure it hurts a little but paint have you ever played we're gonna balls? find out yes i have those hurt like a mother and uh please actually put a beep over that because <laughs> that, that was <laughs> um kind of really gay too <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah those paintballs hurt bad and people still play with those so i'm sure these these can't hurt nearly as bad <laughs> as a paintball and if you got hit right in the crotch with one of these, I'm sure the damage would be pretty minimal compared to what would hurt feel like when one of those paintballs rocket into your crotch. <laughs> Only one way to find out, sir. Wear a cup. Was it you that used to talk about Nerf crotch bat all the time? <laughs> and then would say, not for use with crotch. <laughs> the other things were like, Nerf, Nerf. And it was just a, just a blob of Nerf material that you could buy. So, okay, so well, let me interrupt. Oh, okay. I'd gone to a bunch of these, and I'd taken my nephews. The one that they had last year was the first convention he'd ever gone to. And he really enjoyed it, and he was good, even though he escaped. And finally, the police had him. <laughs> and he'd been with the police for an hour. And they're just like, oh. It was the ransom of Red Chief, but the modern version. They're like, oh, thank you for finding this kid. Because holy cow, he sucks. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is not true. But, but I had been able to take my nephews to a convention for the first time and taking my niece to a convention for the first time and she just thought it was awesome some of these celebrities are not really celebrities but they were in three episodes of Buffy or whatever she's like ah oh, can I hug her will she let me hug her oh, like, anyone who recognizes her or wants to take her picture will make her day she's not a celebrity but you had never taken your kids to any of that stuff and no, so this I was haven't. the first time you took your kids to a convention 
yeah and and they they liked it i think they had a good time they had like the a booth where you could put like snakes where, like they would let you pet real snakes and you could even put it around your neck and if you wanted to pay five bucks you could put like a boa constrictor around your neck and let it choke yourself to death which is what the, uh, the on, founder ended up doing, though, the guy who organized it. <laughs> on film, even. They had that, that arrow shooting thing. And my kids are into archery, which I don't know if it came from the recent archery spate in movies, or I think it was. And I think my son just learned it at camp, and he thought it was neat. Um, and a few other things he learned at camp he liked, too, unfortunately. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they like archery, and so doing this was pretty cool. And my daughter, who was the youngest one of the three older bunch, not, you know, she's obviously not younger than the two year old, she managed to get that target on her last arrow, and she was so stoked about it. I kept telling her, aim higher, because she would shoot it, but she didn't have enough strength to get the dang arrow all the way over there. And I'm like, you're pointing straight ahead. If you aim higher, then it'll go farther before it hits the ground. And she finally did and hit it, and she was so stoked about that. But the arrow thing was cool. The snakes were cool. And they had, like, a place where there was just entertainment going on the whole time. They had magicians and and those people that, like, hang from the drapes and flip around and swing themselves and stuff like that. I think they call themselves aerialists or aerial Areolas, gymnastics. Yes. Apparently, even the, the symphony orchestra was there, and I totally wanted to see that and didn't. I missed it. But we did shoot arrows during that point. The, see, the, in the center of the building, they had built like this... Uh, I don't know what you'd actually call it. I want to call it a coliseum, but what did they build? What uh, is an the arena, order? maybe? They had built an arena, and they were having combatants if you were over 16 you could mock battle and they'd they would separate you into two teams huge masses of teams and people had the foam shields and foam cudgels and, and the, foam swords and the nerf and crotch bats yes which <laughs> had been discontinued long ago and were no longer for use with crotch and it was all for this this organizer's amusement and he would sit up on his dais and he'd be like oh yes fight for me fight. I like the red one. He amuses, he amuses me. me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad that we know. Um, I've just quoted it enough times that you know what I'm going to say when I do it. I, I sort of watched this half-heartedly. I, I don't know. There was something about it. I I hate to, to be judgmental because I'm going to a, a convention, you know, a, a, a con, a, a fandom thing. Which You're going makes to buy me on sci-fi con? Yeah, it makes me the object of ridicule in that, and yet I look down on all of these LARPers because they were so into it. Just like so, you know, I got you, I got you, you're dead, man, no, you're dead, this guy, you know, calling the referee, oh, this guy, I got this guy, and it was, I, there was something so childish or what's the word I'm looking for about this reaction of, of treating it as though it's anything serious or anything, right. and... And so I only watched that for a minute and just the, I don't know, the infantile behavior of of some of these guys. Now, granted, most of them were just there for fun. It's like, ah, you got me, you know, kind of thing. (laughs) And then you're supposed to fall down on the ground. But the ones that, like, refused and, you know, they they were treating it like there was prize money involved or whatever, right? It made it hard to watch. And, and of course, I didn't want to participate in any of that because anything that could be confused with a sport... We, you know, causes me to shy away like Dracula from the dawn. Uh huh. Yeah, that they had a lot of cool stuff. The funny thing was, all that cool stuff that that was there. The things that my kids like the most was there was a booth that had contact lenses that you could put on that like made your eyes look wacky. They had ones that would make your eyes look like reptilian, or they'd be red, or you know whatever you might want for your. They had costume. some for the uh, World Cup that were soccer yeah, ball related. they had soccer ball ones, and they had American flag ones, and just all sorts of wacky. And my kids thought that was so cool for so... That was the everybody's favorite thing, was well, that I don't booth. understand. They didn't give away free samples or anything. Yeah. They wanted money for these, and none of the kids got them. None of the kids got them, but they all thought they were so neat, and all of them wanted to buy one. Every single one, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm saving up my allowance, and... Yeah, I see. Every I wanted to them. buy them too, and I know my niece did because I told her about it. She's like, "Oh, oh, get one for me, get them." But I've never worn contact lenses. Yeah, me neither. And I'm afraid that it would 
be so uncomfortable that the whole time I'd just be like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? Like right. if you ever do like liquid latex makeup or something like that, where you're just like, oh, that'll be so, oh, geez, I want to take it off. I want it off. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I just assumed that the contacts were kind of like this too, except for way more expensive than liquid latex or vampire teeth or a, a wig. And so I didn't dare buy any. But, but we had this conversation. I would like to dress up. I would like to go all out and have a costume and have everybody in my group and we all dress in some theme. theme. Everybody's um, an X-Man or something right, like but, that. But I don't know what how what you would have to do to be to use contacts. I, I mean, if we were going to do another zombie walk, maybe you get the clear contacts that make you look like zombie eyes. But even so, it just seems like so much money to spend for something we would do, we would use once in an afternoon. You know what I mean? Yeah, you'd have to. That's the thing about, and, and I don't know if cosplayers do this or not. If they get a costume and then they're just like, okay, I spent a hundred bucks on this or whatever, I'm gonna be wearing this to every convention from here on out. Plus, I'm gonna march in the parade wearing this, and I'm gonna, you know, I don't know if people do. It seems the ones that you see on like the internet and stuff. They finish one costume, they take a bunch of pictures of themselves wearing it, post it on their blog, and then they start making the next one. And sometimes they're making like three at a time. They're like, okay, I finished this one, here's the pictures. Okay, I'm almost done with this one, and I'm doing this. Okay, now I finished this one. You know, and I suppose if that's what they do, I mean, like we do a podcast, and we don't think it's crazy that we record another podcast and just throw the old one away or whatever. We put it out there for people to see, and then we're done with it. But it seems to me like if you're going to spend a ton of money on a costume, you got to wear that thing. At the very least, you put it in your closet and you have seven and you rotate through for Halloween or something every seven years. Or I don't know what the best way to deal with it is, but you got to start LARPing. <laughs> Once you make a costume, you're like, okay, I'm not really into LARPing, but now I have to go. Uh, where's the next Renaissance Fair? I'm, I'm going to go and joust or whatever. I don't know. I think costumes like that are so cool. And there was somebody there at this convention, and I didn't realize, you know, I, I guess she was just there every day, and I looked on the website for the convention afterwards, and she was posting a bunch of stuff, and I oh, look at this, and I was wearing this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this chick's stuff is rad. I wish I'd have seen her there, because she was obviously there wearing the stuff, and I was like, man, I should have at least gone by and checked her out but i didn't realize she was there until after and so it's too late but i don't know i think it's really cool and i would love to do it the one problem is i don't know how many fat stormtroopers there are out there I, I could be like the rancor keeper or something but you know for a guy with a huge gut like me you've got less options for would you be the rancor keeper <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that i've ever seen somebody Cosplay as a Gamorrean guard or there the you Rancor go. Keeper. I could be a Gamorrean guard. But that's one that's I could cool. be. Well, there was this Paint giant fat green. dude. I think you saw him or you saw his kid. And he dressed as the dad from Brave, the king. And then he had like a two-year-old or three-year-old daughter. Dressed and she was Merida. And it was awesome because he just seemed like a giant. And she was so little. And she had the huge red hair. <laughs> it was adorable, man. And yeah, that's the kind of thing I always want to do. At the last convention I took the boy to, I dressed as Bruce Banner and had him dress as the Hulk. And a couple of people that's recognized cute. that and was like, oh, that's cool. But that's the, 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 the point is you want to do something where they, the whole is, you know, everybody matches and, and, and accentuates the other or whatever right. kind of thing. But that takes work. All I did was, you know, just got the glasses and the, the lab coat and, 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 and that stuff. Yeah, if you you said that you may, might want to take your family and everybody be a member of the Avengers, are We're, any of the Avengers easy to do? No. And the answer well, is no. No. We've got a couple little kid costumes that the two-year-old could wear that are, you know, a, a Captain America or a Iron Man. But they're they're not cool. They're not awesome costumes or anything. They're yeah. just, you know, a, a, basically a jumpsuit and a mask. Um, I thought about doing that with the Captain America costume, just getting him a blue hoodie and then sticking some stripes and a star onto it and making the hoodie have a mask that comes down so it at least covers his head instead of just being a mask that just goes on the front. 
That's but a good idea. I'll probably never do it, sadly. Getting them red boots and red gloves would be... A, I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't be too bad. Well, see, I saw a hoodie for a little kid that was Thor, and it had the hood, and it had the the wings, like it was uh -huh. his helmet on the hood when you put it up, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, and it was $50, and, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the Yeah, that's the thing. Captain America one they have like that, too. And I was just thinking, oh, I'll do a cheap version that I just make myself but i won't <laughs> well see i've been really lucky that the kids have been so excited about the stuff that i'm excited about now granted like the boys are into like pokemon and stuff which i'll never be into but i've been able to you know make them think that marvel comics are cool and you know they, oh who's that and, and that sort of stuff and so so far they really have enjoyed going to the conventions and talking about what they'll do for the next convention. And sounds like your kids may have... They haven't ruled out the possibility of going again. But, you see, we haven't told the whole story. <laughs> see, to, to me, the fact that the kids ever want to go to a convention again... Is, is it, well, it's, just, it's hard to believe, yeah. <laughs> because, A, the convention they went to was not, was not particularly great. Okay, yes, there was a place selling contact lenses for $30 a piece. <laughs> but, well, let me start with mine. My mom's dog died the day of the convention. And we had already made our plans to go to it. But my sister felt like it was very important for her son to be there to, to for the burying of the dog. Because it was his dog, too. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so... She didn't want us to go up, but he wanted to go, and he absolutely did not want to go see the dog buried, which I understood, because it becomes real once you dig the hole and you, you realize you put the dog down there and all that stuff. And he's only six, and, and I kind of just was thinking, well, let's just not go. Let's have the excuse that we're at this convention. And they were taking, you, you never said, your plan was to take the dog down to your father's house, which is all the way down in the town you grew up in. That's which right. Is, a ways away in the middle of nowhere, kind of a long trip. Yeah, it's a, it's farmland and all that, so you can do whatever you want. You know, bury as many bodies as you mm. want to in the backyard. <laughs> and so it's not like you were just, oh, we're going to bury the dog in the... You could do that at any time if you just buried it at your own house. But you're t going elsewhere to do this. And so, yeah, you told me, hey, uh, there's these complications. Um, we may have to leave at any time. So just be prepared. And I was like, well, I don't know if we're going to stay all that long, so it'll probably be okay. But yeah, the weird thing is, why didn't I just say, we'll drive up separately so you guys can enjoy the <laughs> day if we get called away? Yeah. Because then I... you guys would have been screwed, but, you know, I, I, who knows? I, I would have been miles away. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it comes down to it, it could have been way better had we done that. Because, yes, you could have left. Or maybe if you didn't leave, then you could have been there for what did happen. Because, yeah, we got there. We drove all the way up together. We got out of the car. We walked over. We got a pretty good spot. We were really close to the convention center. We walked over to the convention center. We went inside. I reached into my pocket and pulled out the tickets that we already had. And I realized that my keys were not in my pocket. And I know because we were downtown that I had locked the doors so I knew that I had locked my keys in the car so we were already screwed so I called my wife and I said okay we're just going in I've locked the keys in the car so I'm going to need you to come up and bring us a key so that we can get back in there but we're gonna go and we're gonna enjoy the convention and then we'll give you a call when we're getting close, because it's still like a half hour, 45 minute drive for my wife to get there. So I'm like, we'll give you a call and let you know when we're getting ready to go so you can come up and meet us and give us the key. And she was just like, oh, because she, I, I've said before, she has like the world's worst schedule. And so she had to work that morning at 1.30. Well, she got up for work at 1.30 a.m. that morning. She had a, you know, long, stressful day at work, came home. And uh, I left the two-year-old with her so that when he took a nap, she could take a nap with him. And then we wouldn't have to have a two-year-old with us at the convention, which would have been rough. But the two-year-old decided he didn't want a nap that day. And so he did not sleep. And she was she had already slept poorly the night before because it was the 4th of July. 
And so everybody was shooting fireworks off outside the house. And it was just like bang, 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 bang all night long. So she didn't get good sleep to begin with because the bulk of her sleep is, you know, right at the time where, hey, that's when you shoot off fireworks. You've got to wait till it's dark. So, you know, you can't complain that they were doing it late at night or anything. They were doing it at a regular time. We'll just say she was effed up to begin with. And then I call her and say, oh, yeah, by the way, you need to drive all the way up and give me a key. Yeah, she was just like, oh, hopefully I'll make it there awake. Okay, so I got a call, and I, I don't know, we'd been there a couple of hours, but really there was so little going on that a couple of hours is all that you needed uh -huh. to take in everything. Uh, but I got a call, and, and as soon as I answered it, phone was beeping, battery low. <laughs> And my mom had said, you know, we were waiting for my dad to come home from the cabin so that he could dig the hole or that my brother could dig the hole. Or I, I, I don't know why my dad had to be there. Well, you were going to your dad's house to do it. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just, yeah, it wouldn't be polite to bury a dog in the backyard without asking. <laughs> you could have just done it at anybody's house. And you in which case, gonna ask. I But anyway, she called and she said, you know, we, uh, I guess, you know, he'll be, he's on his way or whatever, so... If you can turn around and come home, that, that would be good. And I said, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. But the problem is, and then my phone died. <laughs> and because I hadn't brought my own car, I didn't have any charger, anything like that. It was just in the car. You, know, you can charge it with the cigarette lighter. I had no way of telling her, uh, you know, we can't come back because Big has locked his keys in his car. We have to wait until we can get the keys out or the doors open and then we'll come but i told you you know she called and you're like okay well i'll call my wife and we'll we'll solve this problem and i was trying to think of telephone numbers because you have a phone right and i couldn't i couldn't remember my mom's <laughs> number i couldn't remember my sister's number i remembered my number and my dad's number because it's been the same phone number for you know 35 years and so i did call my dad's number and uh, leave a message on the machine saying what was going on. But I don't know if they ever got it. Yeah, so we were in that position. I called my wife right away, and she's like, okay. And I said, no, 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 are you, are you coming? And she's like, oh, my God, sorry, I'm on my way. And so she got in the car and started driving out, and we're like, okay, now we've got like 45 minutes to an hour to kill. And so we went outside. Well, I said, hey, let's check your car. Maybe it's one of those cars that the doors don't lock when the keys are inside. Yeah, we, we thought there might be a way that maybe there was a, a window down enough you could <laughs> do anything. You know, we went, we checked it out. Yeah, the keys were in there. There they are. Right and there. no, there was no way to get in. And it was hot as hell outside. And we were in, you know, we're downtown. So there is tall buildings that are just reflecting the sunlight all around, you know, in concrete, and that's all there is. And so it was probably like five degrees hotter than anywhere else. You know, you could have just walked anywhere else and sat on the grass somewhere, and it would have been like, oh, wow, it's nice here. But, yeah, it was so hot. And so we thought, okay, there's a Carl's Jr. just like a block over. We saw it when we were driving in. Let's walk over to that Carl's Jr., and we'll get some, like, ice cream shakes. Yeah, ice and, cream sounds good. And we'll sit there and wait. So we walk over to this Carl's Jr. and and we're looking in there. They have this new salted caramel shake, and I was telling the kids, "Oh, this is really good. I had it once, and you guys are gonna like it. It's so good." And they were all excited for it. And we get there and we're like, "Okay, we want uh, two caramel." And oh, we don't have uh, ice cream. <laughs> First of all, that's the whole reason we walked over here, is to get ice cream. Like, well, we have two, four little Oreo. Uh, ice cream sandwiches, you know, because they're made ahead of time, I guess. And they could sell us those. They had four of them left, and that's all they had. So, we had Oreo ice cream. Yeah, and, and since then, my my daughter keeps bugging me. Hey, w we need to get those salted caramel shakes. Because <laughs> you those, promised. Those sounded really good. and you. S but, uh, yeah, so we got, we didn't get an ice cream. We got, we just got those. And the Oreos ones are just not good. I don't know what it is about them. They weren't them. very good, no. Oreo cookies are good by themselves. Mm -hmm. And the ice cream was probably good by themselves. And 
even like cookies and cream ice cream where broken up Oreo cookies are inside. That's even good, but something about this just not very good. I've had them once before and I wasn't all that interested in it. I didn't even try the one that we got. I really love their chocolate chip ice cream sandwiches, but yeah, they discontinued those, so thanks a lot, Carl's Jr. Um, so we sat there for a while, and then my wife said she was getting close, so we walked back over, and um, she pulled up, and we ran over, and we got the key from her. She didn't know where we was, we were parked at, and she is from a very small town, and so anytime she comes downtown, she immediately just starts freaking out. It doesn't matter even if the traffic is heavy or anything. She just immediately freaks out for no reason, just because it's downtown. And there might be a one-way street or, you know, the, the things that you don't run into as much in smaller towns. She freaks out about driving downtown. So just being there upsets her. <laughs> and being extremely overtired only makes it worse so she's just like oh if I'm, I'm here at this place so i ran over to where she was got the key from her and then she left this was like two and a half blocks three blocks from the car yeah it was a few blocks from the car so she left we walked back to the car i opened the car up with the key and i hit the unlock all the doors button and nothing happened and i didn't know what that meant but I had a sneaking suspicion what it might mean. So I came around to the driver's side, opened that door up, got in and went to turn the car on, and I got absolutely nothing because the key had been in the on position the entire time. You, you had left the key in the ignition. Yes, it was in the ignition, in the on position. So all the stuff was on. You know, when you go to turn it on and it starts buzzing at you and dinging the seatbelt bell and the lights all come on for a second or whatever all that stuff had been on the entire time that we were inside the convention and it had run the battery dry so i got absolutely nothing and so i had to get on the phone call my wife back and say hey i'm sorry but you need to come back because the car is also dead and i need you to come give us a jump start and by this point she had gotten on the freeway and was long gone yeah she was on the freeway and she was like 10 minutes or more down the road and yeah she had to get back off the freeway turn around come all the way back to us drive downtown and this time actually find the car because you can't just hand a jump start out the window to somebody and so she basically started crying on the phone when i told her she needed to come back she was so overtired and worked up yeah, it was it was bad news. Um, but yeah, we stood there and waited for her in the hot sun for another like 15 minutes. And I was just kind of standing out in front of the car with jumper cables in my hand and the hood up. I was kind of hoping and praying that somebody would see that and say, oh, do you need a jump start here? Let me help you out, which did eventually happen. Although yeah, it took... that's exactly what happened. A guy pulled up and I don't know if it's irony. This guy was a locksmith. <laughs> yes, he was a mobile so if locksmith. if only he had pulled up before, I say, without spoiling the end of the story, uh, he would have saved us all. But yeah, he's like, oh, you guys need to jump? Cool. And so he pulled over and blocked the lane of traffic. Because, you know, jumping a car is something that only takes a couple minutes or less. And, you know, he turned on his emergencies. He popped his hood and he brought, a, you know, you hooked Yeah, your... we hooked our cables up and... I got in the car and I went to start it and I still got nothing. It just made like a clicking sound now. It didn't turn the engine. It just went grrrr. It sounded like Perry the Platypus. He just went grrrr. It did nothing. Now, see, I don't know how electricity works, how cars work. I don't know how magnets work. What up with, what's up with that? How does that go? Um, <laughs> I don't know the insane but, clown posse. I'm sorry. <laughs> but your van was really big. And this guy had a little teeny hatchback car, and so maybe his battery was too small compared to how big your battery was, but it just wasn't doing the trick. You yeah, know? I would keep trying, and we he would rev his engine, and then we'd let it kind of charge a little bit maybe, and then I'd try again. And we did get to the point where it kind of went, you know, 
did like a, a tiny like it was oh maybe out oh, nah <laughs> kind of a thing it's just like what in the crap this it's i was thinking i was gonna have to call a tow truck like my wife was not gonna be able to help us out and as i'm trying to do this now i've got my wife on the phone going okay how do i find your car and i'm trying to give her directions which oh at no point did you call her and say oh hey don't honey don't worry the guy is saving us i how did you know not to do that well i was going to call her as soon as the car started and tell her that but it of course didn't so know. the samaritan is there and he's trying every once in a while he'd like put his hand on the knee of his hot girlfriend and your engine would go vroom, vroom, vroom. but that's the most we ever got and then his car went vroom. And the engine died of his car. Yes, his battery ran out of juice trying to start my bat. Like, my battery sucked. It was like the vampire battery that sucked all the life out of his battery. And his battery was now an undead battery. But sadly, so was mine, which and is how vampires work. He was in the middle of the road. He had had his emergency flashers on, but now they no longer work. <laughs> so he looks like just a car stopped in the middle of the road, blocking, like I said, that lane. And he's just like, oh, oh boy. Uh, shoot, that's, that's, that's embarrassing. The guy was really cool because by all accounts, he should have been pissed yes. off. And he's like, and I got a hot girlfriend, and look, she is raring to go. Do you see this girl? Do you see her nipples? But he was not. He was very nice. And he's like, oh, well, that's that's a shame. I, I'm sorry, guys, that now I'm screwed, too. And I was like, Yeah, Ow. his battery died, and I'm like, oh, great. Okay. I was hoping to be able to tell my wife, no, you, you can turn around and go. Somebody stopped, and we're started now. And so thank you for but it's it's, for it's, playing. it's, it's all good now, and, and everything's going to be fine. Instead, I'm like, okay, uh, here's how to... And I still was trying. She was having a hard time figuring out how to get there. Which is weird, because our city is not... It's not Boston, where, you know, all the streets curve and, and run in all sorts of crazy directions, and there's no way to give somebody directions. It's a grid. Yeah, it's, it's very just a, well organized. It's really easy to get from one... You don't even need to know... All you need is an address, and you can find your way there. It's really easy to follow... But it's too hard for someone from a village of a hundred people, or however a thousand people, or I think it's less than a thousand that she grew up with. Where there's basically there's two streets, and there's a couple of cross streets. It's real easy to find someone's house. So she has a hard time, which is funny because she hasn't lived in a town like that for twenty years. She should be able to find her way, but I guess you can't escape the way you're raised or something. She did eventually find it. I'm like, okay, you got it. You're on the street. You got to see us. We're blocking the road. We're, you know, and finally she found us. And we actually, luckily, I have a very small car, so I could do a complete U turn in the middle of this road without so any trouble. It's now facing the wrong way in that lane, but the lane is already blocked <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, the lane was already blocked off, so I figured it didn't matter. I turned it around and got it facing this locksmith guy's car. And. We got his car started, like, on the first try. Just, it was on. Well, we, we had all re also gone through a set of jumper cables. They were so... Your cables were so hot from all the electricity going through or whatever that you couldn't even touch them. You know, it was just like, ah, ah, kind of well, thing. Probably just from the sun oh, yeah, shining on it them. It was so hot that day. But luckily, he had some jumper cables, too, and so... we Yeah, he plugged them on to our two cars... And my car is relatively new. We bought it just last year, and so it's in good shape, and the battery is not suspect. This guy decided that he, he must need to get his battery checked, or else, you know, he wouldn't just be able to have his battery drained unless he's got a bit of an issue. So maybe we actually helped this guy out by finding a problem with his car before it became a big problem. I don't know. You're a glasses half full kind of guy. <laughs> but yeah, so we got his car started, then we hooked my car up to my other car, and I got in there, and it still didn't start the first time, but it did show promise. <laughs> yeah, it made some noise, and, and then it didn't start. And then it made some more noise, and then we let her rev the engine a little bit a few times, and, and then a little bit more, and then we finally got it to start. And I was like, yes! And uh, I took my foot off the gas, and it died. <laughs> And so I started it again, and it started again. And so I revved the engine a little bit, and I took my foot off the gas, and it died. 
And so then I started it a third time, and then this time I'm like, okay. And so I just revved and revved and revved and revved and the she, engine. And she sat there on the, in the other car filling out divorce papers. <laughs> in the time that it took her to get to the last page, we figured, okay, your, your battery has charged. Although I really don't know how batteries work. Yeah, we I don't... thought that all it would take is just having a live battery connected to a whatever one, yours you, you is you get with, a, with yeah with current going through it. And it once would... you get the engine started, I was always under the impression that once the engine is started, it runs on gasoline and doesn't need the electricity. Oh, okay. And so it should stay on once it's started. I was really confused when the battery, when it died after I let off the gas, but it eventually stayed on, luckily. I kept revving and revving, and my wife was just like, oh, crap, we're going to have to get a tow truck. I don't want you driving out onto the freeway, and then the car just stops on you. And I'm like, I don't think it will do that once we get it going. And finally, it got to a point where I let off the gas, and it continued to, it idled instead of dying. And I was like, oh... We're saved, finally. And yeah, I got out, we unhooked the, the cables and put them away. And I did a U-turn again for my wife in the middle of the road <laughs> and got her car facing the correct direction. And then we all piled into the car and we headed out. And we, yeah, it's a 45 minute drive to get back to where you and I had met and you left your car. I was a little nervous, I have to admit, when we dropped you off and I slowed down and let off the gas, <laughs> just afraid that it might just die on us again. And my wife followed me all the way into, you know, we were in a parking lot of a Target and she followed us all the way in there, even though she probably could have just gone home instead of following me there. But obviously it's good to have a backup. Yeah, a backup. And so she was there just in case. But when I let off the gas, it stayed on which was good, and you hopped in your car, and, and then I drove mine home, and I when I turned it off, once I got in the driveway, I immediately started it back up, just, just to, to make see? sure, and it had charged, and since then we haven't had a problem, um, which I think means my alternator works, because the alternator, I think, is the thing that charges your battery uh, while you're driving. It's kind of like the whole the hybrid thing, where you drive with the gasoline engine, and it charges your batteries, and then when you're going slower, you ride with the battery power electric style but anyways yeah so that was our fun now i don't know if you have more to your story after you got dropped off i'm assuming you missed the whole i yes i missed the dog funeral but i don't know i don't know how important it was that i be there i was mad at the dog the dog had been sick for a while and then we all went to the cabin the weekend before and we took the dog and i was petting the dog and it bit me, and it bit me hard. I still have the mark on my, my hand, and I was just furious. And I, I, I was angry at my mother, and I said, I was like, this dog is done. If it had done this to one of the children, you know, that could be serious damage to a kid. I mean, it's like, I'm a grown man, and it hurt. And there's marks right here where the teeth just went in, and all that. And that was kind of my last memory of the dog, was being angry with it. But still, you know, you want to support your mom, and, and I know my sister wanted her kids there, as a circle of life sort of thing. I, I See, I don't really understand. I don't know what... I mean, maybe just everybody has a barometer of what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. I know All I know is the kid didn't want to go and, you know, this catastrophe with the... And it wasn't even a catastrophe. This irritating, hot inconvenience gave us an excuse not to send a kid to a dog funeral. Afterward, I just the two of us went and I got him snow cones and we... Uh, or uh, we got snow cones and we sat and we talked and I talked to him about, you know, the dog and are you going to miss the dog and, and all that stuff. And and so, you know, I felt like we had a goodbye on that. Although, I, you know, I don't know. That's that's not my place. See, I don't have kids. And so I've sort of adopted my sister's kids as my own. And uh, sometimes I probably overstep my bounds because I start to think of them as my kids. You know, it's like, well, I want to do this, so I'm going to take the kids, which is odd. I don't know. I mean, I know you had 115 nephews and nieces before you ever had kids and maybe it was like that too it was to a point but i was younger and so it was just yeah i'm gonna hang out i'm gonna play with the kids and stuff and i loved all my nephews and had a great time playing with them but i never felt like a father figure to them in any way because i was too young for that still 
I could barely imagine taking care of myself, much less someone else trying to be a father figure to my nephews was probably beyond my ability at the time. And, you know, once I got to the point where I could have been, then I had my own kids and I had to be a father figure to them because I was their father. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's really cool that you do that, that you've been able to find. That. And I know you express fear sometimes because you have your niece that you used to do like a lot of these same things with when she was younger and now that she's getting older she's starting to be like too cool for that and that's lame and whatever yeah she's gotten to that age of you know drop me off a block away from the school that kind of thing <laughs> which i all everybody goes through everybody has experienced that you know where suddenly their parents are no longer cool or where you, the opinion of your friends becomes more important than the opinion of your family it's just a natural part, but it's ugly to see it from the, the outside. Right, and so that niece that you used to do all these things with is now sort of too cool, and I know that you fear that the same thing will happen with your nephews eventually, which hopefully it doesn't. I hope that, that you know, that they always remember you fondly, and even when, you know, you're 50 and they're 20 or whatever, I don't know how the math works out because I don't really know the ages and... I can't add, but, you know, I hope that they still want to hang out sometimes and like, hey, Uncle Rish, let's go see this movie because it's Avengers Part 6. It's Transformers 10. Let's go see it. I hope that that happens. I'm sure experiences like this convention, well, no, that probably doesn't strengthen the bond. Having to sit outside in the sun waiting to get a jump is not one of those things that helps people like someone. No, no, I think it does. Because, <laughs> yeah, you can reminisce about good times with your family, but you can also reminisce about bad times. And, oh, do you remember when this happened? And that was neat because he wanted to tell everybody about our day and about, oh, and then this happened and this guy came and his car died too. And somebody did this with their finger when they drove around the car stuck in the middle of the road. <laughs> and he had this cool experience of, you know, a, a struggle that we overcame to tell everybody. And I thought that was neat. I, I don't know. I, the the fact that, that we hadn't... And the, the, reason, the only reason we're doing this episode is because of the bad things that happened. That's true. Yeah, I wanted to tell the story because it just seems like one of those really fun stories where, you know, it couldn't have gotten that bad kind of a thing. And not like any of the things that we had to deal with were truly and really awful or difficult to deal with but little pains in the butt like this are kind of the things that make up life and uh it's fun to be able to look back on this i remember one time when i was in college a friend of mine went hiking and like hikers sometimes do he decided to go off the path and, oh, look, we can climb up these rocks over here. And pretty soon he found himself up on a cliff. Wait, is this story end with James Franco hacking his own arm? <laughs> Luckily, no. Oh, but okay. it's very similar to that kind of a thing. He found himself up on like a, a 10-foot drop down to the next cliff as he's trying to get off from where he was. And he thinks, I can make it. He jumps down and breaks his foot. <laughs> And now he's got a broken foot and he's stuck up in this hard-to-get-down-from place. He wound up spending the night on this cliff on the mountain, yelling for help, trying to get... And this is long enough ago that people just didn't have cell phones they could call 911 with. Um, well, some people did, but even if he had a cell phone, he may not have gotten reception where he was anyways. So yeah, he's yelling for help up here. He spent the whole night. It can get cold, even in the middle of summer, up in a mountain at night. And he wasn't in a tent with a blanket or anything. He was just sitting there. And with a broken foot, too. With a broken foot, which hurts like hell, obviously. And he's stuck up there. Finally, some people hear him in the morning, and they come over to help him. But... Could but they, they turn out to be cannibals. They didn't turn out to be cannibals. See, oh. this is just a small problem kind of a thing, not a <laughs> yeah. a life and death kind of a problem. It's a thing that life is made up of. So they come to help him, but all they can do to help him is help him down. And he still had to walk all the way down from this mountain on his broken foot. And then he gets down, he goes to the hospital, and they had to do all this stuff to his foot. He's in a cast, and he's on crutches. 
And he calls me up like the next day or whenever and tells me this whole story. It sounds like one of those stories to me where, you know, oh, this happened and I'm just like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? And I'm laughing about this story as he tells me this. He's telling me this over the phone and so I can't see his face and I don't realize he did not like the idea that I was laughing at this story. And he was so irritated with me for not being like, are you okay? Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, that's the kind of response he wanted, apparently. And me hearing this story and laughing about it made him very angry and hurt. I didn't realize this. And I, I, I later found out that I apparently reacted the wrong way. But the funny thing is, a year later, after this had happened, I'm with this guy and he's telling somebody the story of what happened. And now a year later, apparently it was enough time because he's telling the story and he's laughing about the story. The person hearing the story is laughing about it. And I'm sitting there next to him going, see, see, and he's like, yeah, well, it didn't seem funny at the time. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's just, yeah, it's one of those things that you, you know, like, like your nephew was loving to tell the story. Those are the kind of stories that you love to tell. People love to tell like injury, how they got their cast how they got their scar on their forehead or whatever. Those are always like the funnest stories to tell. Where those things came from, the little hurts and pains. Oh yeah, this, oh you wouldn't believe in this. Do you um, want to know how I got this <laughs> scar? <laughs> and so Big yeah. Anklevich is a real bastard. <laughs> and I think that's, that's one of the cool things about life is telling those misfortune stories. And when people are like, oh no, no way, you're kidding me. That guy's car died, too? No. Oh, see, I gained a new found respect for your kids because, like, you got a punk son who won't take a friggin' hat off. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this kid's no good. And none of them complained or, bit, or were a-holes at all. And I was just like, wow, you know, lesser kids would have been bitching the whole time and just like, this is why I want to live with mom. <laughs> and that didn't happen. I, I was impressed by the, how well-behaved and patient and understanding the kids were. You know, it was hot and miserable in a dead car in a magnifying part of, of downtown where it's just super hot. And they uh, they all seemed to think it was an adventure, too. And that's good. I hope that they, like, you know, they do seem like they might be interested in going again, which, yeah, after something like that, it's one of those things where some somebody might say, no, hell no. Oh, F that. No way, I'm not changing again. changing my last name, too. Yeah, they, you know, that could easily be their idea. But instead, they seem pretty open. And even sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, for the next convention, we should get this costume and go like that. And buy those cool contact lenses. <laughs> and so it's cool that that's the way they've reacted. And I hope, and it's, I guess these days it's much cooler because comic books, like you you were saying earlier, you managed to convince your nephews that Marvel Comics is cool and I can say that no you didn't all those awesome Marvel movies that make bajillion dollars convinced your nephews that Marvel is cool and all the cartoons Marvel is everywhere you don't have to convince anyone that it's cool because it just is it's like the biggest thing going right now maybe that's just why they love it and I don't have to do anything but all my kids seem to really enjoy that stuff and I'm glad that they do, and I hope that that can be something we can do together for years to come. Even when they're as old as I am, you know, we can still go to these nerd conventions <laughs> together. And be like, come on, yeah, let's go. I'm 60, and they're 40, and we're going to these nerd conventions as a group, all dressed as the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, or, and I'm dressed as the oldest one. I'm going as Xavier, and they're like all the younger X-Men. <laughs> but you actually need a wheelchair. <laughs> but I don't know. I hope that that kind of stuff can happen in the future, because I think it's it's neat and it's fun. And whatever you can do to make a bond with people that lasts for a long time is cool. Yeah, that's something I've definitely noticed just in the last few years with the... I, I mean, I, I badmouth it because it sucks but the whole cell phone thing where suddenly it, you can be in contact with tons of strangers but you don't have to be in contact with the people right next to you that seems to make people much much more distant but anything that you can grab a bunch of people and you're all standing in line or sitting in a hot car together or you're all grumbling that 
they had no ice cream at the place that you know you went to get ice cream that kind of thing is thing is neat now you you've taken your kids to soccer games and i want to take my nephew to a soccer game before it's too late maybe it may be too late now but but i just before he learns that soccer sucks and it's for girls well <laughs> he's got a real dad you know mm-hmm. and his dad is into like wwe and, okay no that's not true he's into like uh wfc and ufc yeah, UFC, the ultimate fighting thing, and, and we won't get into whether that's cool or not, because I'm sure that listener is long, long gone. <laughs> but, you know, he's just into different stuff than I am, and yes, soccer is not one of the things that he's into. And one of the things I like about soccer is it's just easy to understand. You know, the rules are easy, and the goal of the game is just so easy. And uh, But it's just, yeah, it's something that a six-year-old, I think, can get into, and being, and if we went to, I mean, I've gone to, I used to go to those games with you and my friend all, all the time, because you guys used to always have season tickets, and then you, you know, you needed a third or something like that, and I would come. But being there with this big crowd of hundreds of Hispanic people, stop it! <laughs> We're not using racial any any things here, please. Uh, being in this group with a bunch of brown people, stop it! <laughs> Being in this group with a... starting to sweat here, so get through your (laughs) story. Being there with a bunch of people that are are passionate and they're cheering and they're shouting and they're, oh, when, you know, he misses the goal and all that. That's something that would be really, really fun to take the kid to. Yeah, it's it's neat to find something um, like that. And it's especially cool if it's, you know, when you find that whatever that thing is where it latches on, it becomes a thing that... You always do, and you may never know what that's going to be until it happens, and it may right now be something you don't give a crap about, and then you go and try it one day, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, what it is that you guys do always together is going fishing, and you'd never fished once in your life until you did it that first time, and it turned out you both loved it, and then you want to go and do it all the time. You know, you never know. It's cool to try new things, um, and it's also cool to find that, that thing that you love. I don't know what we, what I was really going for with this episode. I was kind of the guy that insisted we do it, and I think it was just because I wanted to tell the t- story about the car. And only I survived to tell the tale. Yeah, I don't know if uh, if we had a, a moral of our story or what it is we're trying to say, but it seems like we're saying find something cool to do with people and do it. So, yeah, I guess that's our moral of the story. Now I know. Or maybe there's no moral. Maybe it's an immoral story. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe we can talk about a movie or something next time. Yeah, we'll have to do that. All right, uh, I guess we're done. Um, the wind, we, we rolled up the window so that the wind wouldn't make too much noise. And I'm sweating over here now. So I need to get out and stand in the wind so it can do that whole evaporation cools you off thing. So yeah. Uh, We'll be back next time with more awesomeness on That Gets My Goat. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rush Outfield. Your convention is waiting. Yeah. So, you know what you want? Mexicans. Brown people. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you.